in this lecture i am going to explain about prenel's biprism prenel's biprism was devised by a scientist prenel to show the phenomena of interference prenel's biprism is an optical instrument used to produce two coherent images of a given slit which are separated at a certain distance and behaves as two coherent sources Prenel's biprism was devised to produce coherent sources. Now coming to construction, a biprism is a combination of two acute angled prisms placed base to base. Acute angle means the angle less than 90 degrees and obtuse angle means the angle greater than 90 degrees. So here this biprism can be considered as the combination of two acute angled prisms which are arranged base to base. Now this combination is obtained from an optically plain glass plate by proper grinding and polishing. The obtuse angle of the prism is about 179 degrees and the two acute angles are half degree and half degree. Half degree is nothing but 30 minutes because 1 degree is 16 minutes. Now coming to working. The slit S is illuminated by a monochromatic source of light such as sodium vapor lamp. Here the slit S is illuminated by a monochromatic source of light. The light emerging from the slit is allowed to fall on the biprism as shown in this figure. Now the edge Q of the prism divides the incident wavefront. Here, the light coming from the slit is in the form of wavefronts. So, this wavefront touches the edge Q and this edge of the biprism, that means the vertex of the biprism, divides the incident wavefront into two parts. The first part of the wavefront passes through the upper half of the prism P, Q, J. Here, P, Q, J is upper part. R, Q, J is the lower part of the prism. So, the first part of the wavefront passes through, through the upper part. It deviates through a small angle towards the lower half E, S1, H. This beam appears to diverge from the slit S1. Originally, this is the beam, but if you see here, E, S1, H is one beam, upper portion of wavefront that is deviating towards the lower side. So, this appears to coming from the virtual source S1. The second part of the wavefront passes through the lower half, R, Q, J of the by prism, it deviates through a small angle towards the upper half F, S2, G and appears to diverge from the virtual source S2. Here, the source is single only, S only, but the vertex of the by prism divides the wavefront into two parts. One part passes through the upper half. And appears to diverge from S1. The other part passes through the lower part of the biprism and appears to diverge from the virtual source S2. So here two beams are coming from the two portions of the biprism that is E S1 H is one beam, F S2 G is another beam, and these beams are overlapping here. S1 and S2 are considered as coherent sources and here the overlapping region is EF. So in this region we will observe the interference fringe pattern that can be studied or and observed through the micrometer eyepiece. So a single light source is divided into two parts at the vertex and they are again overlapping here. So like that, by the division of wavefront, here the interference fringe patterns are forming.
Now, what is the use of Reynolds biprism? So, the determination of wavelength of light is one application. Now, in the lab, how can we determine the wavelength? Let us see. The wavelength of light can be determined using biprism and spectrometer. So, with the spectrometer and biprism, the wavelength can be determined. So, the biprism is placed on the prism table with the vertex towards the collimator. Vertex towards the collimator because the slit of the collimator is illuminated by sodium vapor lamp here. The light is coming like this. So, the incident light is allowed to fall on the vertex. So, we are arranging the biprism on the prism table like this. The slit of the spectrometer is illuminated with sodium vapor lamp. Now, the parallel beam of light coming from the collimator. Here, in the collimator, we are having a slit, a collimating lens. So, the parallel beam of light that is coming from the collimator is made to incident on the pipe prism. Seeing through the eyepiece of the spectrometer. Here, we are seeing through this. So, the telescope consists of an objective and eyepiece. We are seeing through this eyepiece. Two virtual images are observed. Two virtual images of this slit are observed like this. And these two virtual images are said to be coherent sources S1 and S2. Now, the readings for S1 and S2 are noted as R1 and R2 with the help of two verniers of the spectrometer. And the difference between R1 and R2 is noted as angular distance between the coherent sources. So, the first part of the experiment is the determination of angular distance between the coherent sources that is alpha. Now, coming to second part of the experiment. So, here we want to determine the angular fringe width. Fringe width is nothing but the distance between two successive fringes. So, for the determination of the angular fringe width, fringe width, we are removing the collimating lens of the collimator and objective of the telescope because the collimating lens, it receives the light and made the light as a parallel beam. So, it is not uh, incidenting the light as it is here and here this objective, it receives the light that is passing through the biprism and it focuses here. So, we are seeing only the coherent sources but not the fringes. So, here in this part of the experiment, we want to see the fringes like this. So, for, this, for that reason, remove collimating lens of the collimator and objective of the telescope. Now, the light coming from the slit of the collimator directly falls on the biprism. Now, seeing through the telescope, the biprism along the, with the prism table is slightly rotated until the interference fringe patterns are clearly seen in the field of eyepiece like this. Now, the vertical crosswire of the uh, spectrum, that means telescope, is made to coincide with the sum of the bi bright fringe and this fringe is named as 0. And the reading is noted. Now the telescope is slowly moved and the vertical crosswire is made to coincide with second, fourth, sixth, etc. bright fringes and the corresponding readings are noted. The angular fringe width between two adjacent bright fringes is now calculated as beta. Now knowing the values of alpha and beta, we can calculate the wavelength of incident light lambda using this formula alpha into pi by 180 because we are converting the angular distance as the linear distance here. Hence alpha into pi by 180 beta into pi by 180 a b by by a plus b. Here what is a? The distance between slit and by prism is a. The distance between by prism and the crosshairs is b. So by knowing the values of A, B, alpha and beta, 
we can calculate the wavelength of incident light using this formula. In general, the wavelength of light is determined using the formula lambda is equal to beta into 2d by capital D. Here beta is the principle, 2d is the distance between two coherent sources and capital D is the distance between the source and screen. So this is the general formula for the determination of wavelength in case of interference fringe pattern but for a biprism this is the formula. The wavelength of light can be determined using this formula lambda equal to alpha into pi by 180 beta into pi by 180 into a b by a plus 